I mean, London did beckon for you, what, five years ago? Yeah, it's probably five years I went. Yeah, I've been back for just on two years now. Mm -hmm. So I was there for three, three and a half years. Was there a big difference in the way they work compared to the way we work here? Uh, No, No. not at all. Not in terms of the way they they do things, except as an Australian you're treated as a, a cultural minority. I was going you to know, say, is there a separation? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They're like, it's a British part. No, you can't do it. You're like, <laughs> really? Oh, my accents. They're like, no, no. And they're really, you know, you have to fight to get over that barrier. And lots of people come over for a year and they go, you're going to be here and gone. No, I'd rather spend some, you know, invest in an actor who's going to be here permanently. So you have to prove yourself oh, okay. quite heavily. Unless you're going for an American part or an Australian part. They're like, yes, come, come. But are there many Australian parts? Uh, there are on TV, but you're always the cliched Australian. Thanks for notes. You're either pulling beers, <laughs> backpacking, and you're like, oh, God. You know, um, but there, there's a few, and they do do some bits and pieces that have Australians in them, uh, because Australians are very, very pleasant, present sorry, and pleasant in, oh, uh, in London. Right. Yeah. So a lot of the contemporary writing does feature Australians because they're part of the landscape of London. Very much so, yeah. Mm. I mean, and thanks to all the soaps. I mean, you did some British soaps, didn't you, going the other way? I, yeah, I did. I played an Australian dentist in one. Oh, so. <laughs> so that really? was um, a, a soap called Family Affairs, which yep. I did for about seven or eight months over well, there, which was good fun. Well, that's slightly outside the cliche, isn't it? A dentist. I, <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. I, I never had a dental chair. I ne- it's like, I was just, that was who he was. I said, oh, he's a dentist. I went... Okay, sure. So you did him standing up, did you? Or? <laughs> yeah, well, so, well, I just, and you never saw him at work. Oh, okay. You know, I was there visiting and kind of like just stayed for a while and never, I, I was like, let's get the chair out, let's do it, you know? And they're like, no. I went, oh, okay. But, you, but Australians are generally quite, I mean, even, even if in show business I think you're not going to hang around, they're generally well received, aren't they? As they are. Workers. I mean, our, our work ethic is, is renowned around yeah. the world, definitely. But I've got to ask you as well, when you were there, yes. you did. Uh, a bit of a cultish thing as a closet nerd. You actually appeared in the Doctor Who <laughs> radio show. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, the radio series of Doctor Who. Because before they were, uh, or before they did this new TV series of Doctor Who, mm. Doctor Who's continued yeah, on, yeah. on radio Definitely. the whole time. Mm. You know, and they use at the time the current Doctor, which was Paul McGann. Yep. Um, and he did them, and lots of other, other actors who'd appeared in the show. And, uh, yeah, they're huge over there. Oh, but it's now cool to be a fan. Not, it's it's, not well, yes, it's, it's, <laughs> kind of, yeah, it's kind of like, ah. Yeah. yeah. It was, um, so, yes, I did do uh, one of the, the series of um, Doctor Who on radio there. So what did you play? Uh, <laughs> all sorts of things. Um, oh, I see. A bit like this. Well, a bit like this, in that, you know, they, they hire a bunch of actors, and like, mm. we, we were apes at one point. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's kind of like the original TV show where you cut the ice cream carton up and, you know, they do a whole lot. They use you for as much as they possibly can. You play various characters and they'll give you an American accent or an English accent and or you're a str- whatever, you know, and they'll use you in various ways for different episodes and things. So and as so, an ape, you did have dialogue. You were just grunting on radio. No, 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 that one we were just grunting. Oh. I, I did other stuff in the episode as well because they were experimenting on these apes and trying to get them to speak and control their behaviour so. and stuff. And so, yeah. Well, you certainly entered the cult pantheon doing, I have, doing that. I have, and, you know, you get these random emails and things on Facebook and they goes, oh, I love Doctor Who. I was going, oh, delete, delete. <laughs> oh, scary. scary, yeah. yeah no, bit, but they all mean well, actually. But I, I did get to work on that with um, Arthur Bostrom, who was from Hello, oh, Hello. Good He's morning. Crabtree, yeah, good morning. <laughs> He's, re- He's responsible for my cod French accent in this show because we did another oh, show called wow. The Merry Widow together. Oh, great. And I had to do this French thing. I went, I can't believe I'm doing this with you in the show. This is so embarrassing. So he said, he said uh, I would be your comedy coach. I went, thank you, Arthur. Oh, bless him. So he's one of my best friends now, and he's great. And um, I've never seen him in anything else other than that. Well, he, role well yeah, he did a lot of that. Well, he does a lot of theatre mm. over in, in London. Um, and yeah, but that's, you know, over here you see that, and that's, how could you forget uh, that? You know? So yeah, he's, he's present with me up here. And I actually had a, a line he taught me, which is like, uh, um, she has a face like a dog, which is in. Um, the Merry Widow. Mm-hmm. And I have the same line in this one. I go, she's a fist like a derg. And I, I emailed him saying, you will not believe what I have to say in this show. And I went, he's hysterical. So. Now, you probably will never live down... Well, you'll probably never get past Secret Life, will you? I mean, that was a pretty significant... I prefer live down. <laughs> I'm past it. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, you know what I <laughs> no, mean. No, I take you your point, yes, I mean. absolutely. I mean, having, you know, sort of looked at queer TV over the years, I mean, I think that was a pretty significant character in terms oh, of definitely. queerdom. Yep. I mean, did you get much of a sense from the community as to whether the character was well received or was there a queer cringe, a cultural cringe or was it positive? You know what, the, we didn't get any um, kind of backlash from the community mm-hmm. uh, and which I'm very, very thrilled about because we, we, we discussed a lot how we were going to do this mm. and, and a lot of the stories that came up originally 
um, I thought were a bit iffy right. and a bit kind of cliched. And I was mm. like, look, it's been done. Everyone's done that. Mm. Why don't we look at this angle or that angle? And, you know, one of the producers, Amanda Higgs particularly, was very um, strongly focused on ensuring that, you know, it was a more accurate portrayal for, for the reasons that ev- everything else has been done. We've got all those cliches. Yeah. You know, let's put something else up there and, and see what, what we get. And uh, even now I get emails from people saying, you know, thank God that show was on and, and you were doing that because at the time I was coming out and this and that. And I kind of think, well, I'm really glad we could, we could um, make that process easier mm. for some people. Uh, and, yeah, and people love it. They, they really, really did enjoy it, and uh, I'm very proud of that work. So beautiful. I was going to, yeah, I was going to ask you, did you get people writing? Because uh, Joe Hashin back in the '70s and number '96, I mean, he had people write to him from the country saying, "You saved my life, basically." Yeah, we well, yes, got lots and lots of, of stories in fan mail, mm. um, and I said I still get them even now. More so if I run into people that come and go. <gasps> He's like, oh, hey. and they're like, you're the reason I'm gay. I'm like, oh, all right. Okay. I don't think, does that mean? He said, I don't mean it that way. I was like, okay, right. That is a big thing to have in your uh, shoulders. Yeah, I was like, great. Thank you for that. Uh, gorgeous. Um, yeah. So, what's coming up for you after the old fringe season? Uh, well, we go beyond the fringe season, so we go right through till the end of October. Yeah, till the 28th. Until the 28th of October. Yeah. Yes, yes. Then uh, either December, I hope, or February, we'll be doing this in Dubai. Wow. Um, and then hopefully Torch Song Trilogy up in Sydney. Oh, fabulous. So, for uh, Mardi Gras season? Well, part, yes, under the, uh, within the season, but again, it uh, will run beyond wow. um, Mardi Gras. Oh, so. Okay, good start of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a way to go. Look, Spencer, thank you so much for no uh, taking time all. out to chat to us. Good luck for the rest of the season. Eh? Thank and you very much. We might catch you some other time. People, Athenaeum till the 28th of October. And... Uh, He's fully committed. Yes, Ticketmaster. Book early, book often. Indeed. Thank you. No problem. Cheers. Yes, Oscar. I don't do the bump. Okay. Hey, Sam. Yes, Bob. I'll be there as soon as I can. Huh? You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting. How can I help you? I'm sure hoping you can. This is Mr. Timothy Winslow calling from Louisville, Kentucky. My husband and I are coming to New York the weekend of January 13, and we are just dying to come and eat with y'all. Uh, ma'am, unfortunately, we're fully committed that weekend. But you're full of what now? At the Athenaeum Theatre until the 28th of October, Spencer McLaren is fully committed. For bookings, phone 8412 or visit www.melbournefringe.com.au.